Hey everyone, this is Kristen with Orlando Homeschool Family and I'm here today with a nature book haul. And this isn't really books that we just got, you know, recently in the past week or so. These are books that we've been collecting for a while, but these are the books that fill the nature spot on our bookshelves. So this is our nature book haul for you. I'm going to start off with the Curious Nature Guide. Explore all the natural wonders all around you. This is a charming little book that helps you find ways to connect yourself and your family with nature. It just gives you little ideas of what to listen for, what to look at, you know, where to go, things that you can do to really connect yourself with nature. It's a, it's a really fun little book. And then, whoops, I need to move some books up here. Moving on, we have Nature Anatomy from the Julia Ruthman Anatomy Collection. And uh, we do have the other three that go with this, but I'm going to save those for a different book haul of the nature. <laughs> um, so Nature Anatomy, the curious parts and pieces of the natural world. And this book has really, really neat, unique illustrations. and. It's just like a neat little nature guide to tell you about, you know, just cut and dry little explanations of all kinds of things to do with nature. Like here's the anatomy of a fern and it tells you the different parts and the different types of ferns. And then we've got a little section on lichen and it's just got these nice little short things about different things. Oh, and here's an activity printing patterns. So every so often you'll see some sort of like neat nature oriented activity in the book. Um, oh neat, I didn't even notice they had the Osage orange in here. And those are really nifty. You can't get them in Florida, but you can actually order them on Amazon. And if you put them supposedly in like the corners of your windows, it supposedly keeps away spiders from your house. So. I don't know if that's really true. We tried it one time. I don't know if it really worked or not, but it's pretty neat. Um, okay, so we have in here different types of trees. And then it's just like little illustrations showing you what the leaf of the tree looks like and what the tree looks like. So these are really neat little books. I, I really like these a lot and they're fun to refer to um, when you're doing any kind of nature study and you need to elaborate more on any given topic within that. Here's another really great one, The Practical Naturalist. Um, this one you can pretty much only find secondhand. eBay is what I would recommend as far as like where to find them. And there it's done by DK and Audubon. We ended, we ended up with actually like two copies of this book so we can use those together. I can read from them and the kids can look on the other one. Oh, I've got a bookmark in here. We were just looking at this on Friday. A lot of neat things about different aspects of nature in here as well. And each one of these different nature books have things laid out in different ways and have, you know, slightly more information or information that's, you know, displayed in a different way. It's just really nice to have on hand. I really like this page here, this beach close-ups, really neat. Coral reef, cliffs little bit more information than you'll find in the nature anatomy book and but I find them both to be very very useful okay so this is another one about connecting with nature uh, we picked this up secondhand as well the nature connection and outdoor workbook for kids families and classrooms so this one gives you activities to do and things to draw um, Okay, so this is different, like, still life type things you can draw, or you can draw, you know, a bird they see flying in the sky or such. My color wheel of the seasons. 
So you can kind of work on this and go back and forth through the book throughout the seasons. Oh, okay, so here's September. I haven't looked through this that much. I just recently got this August. Okay, so this actually goes out throughout the whole year and gives you ideas of what to do as far as, you know, workbook type activities that are for nature. So this could be like the basis of like your whole outdoor and nature study for the entire year, different things for every month. This one is another one that I recently picked up from eBay secondhand and it was, uh, I can't remember which channel I saw it on in YouTube, but it has a lot of really good stuff in here too. And this is going to be a lot more in depth. It's a little more of a dry read, but there are some really great illustrations and photos in here and a lot of information. So if you're looking for something that has a little bit more in depth information to go along, this is really nice. Very cool. Oh, that's nice. Kind of reminds me of Correggio Emilia nature display. So amateur natural or the a practical guide for the amateur naturalist by Gerald Durrell. Now this one took a little bit of time to track down. I had to get this second hand on eBay as well. The ABCs of nature. And this was put out by I believe Time Life. Let's see. Let's see if I can see in here. I can't see on the side right now. Oh no, Reader's Digest. Okay, so this was put out by the Reader's Digest. I'm starting to find more and more really great book series that the Reader's Digest had uh, put out. So this is the ABCs of Nature, a family answer book. Now this was recommended by Pepper and Pine. Uh, she had talked about how there was a really good, oh, I just opened up to it, <laughs> a really good section on mushrooms and lichens and that this was the most in-depth that she had seen out of, you know, all the most popular books that are out there for nature and such. Mosses here. Mosses and horse tails. Ferns, whoops. <laughs> Ferns. Conifers. Some plants have seeds. So this is presented in a more Kind of old-fashioned way this book was from a few years ago but there's a lot of good information here and it's a great reference book to have on hand for your nature studies and learning about all aspects of nature so i definitely recommend this one if you can track it down secondhand on like ebay or something all right so let me get this next section of books um plants close up supports the national curricula for England, Wales, Scotland, and Northern Ireland. So this is just a really neat look at all kinds of nature things and just a little close-up photos. And of course, this is going to be, you know, geared towards people living in those regions of the world. But these are things that we are learning about as well. That's a really fun book. And I think there are a few more to this series too that are to do with other things, but I don't have those ones and I'm not really sure what I saw out there. I know there was something that I'd bookmarked somewhere. All right, so we picked up a few of these little teeny thin time for kids readers at a, a local bookstore and, or library bookstore there's like a whole stack of them i think i got them for 10 cents each or so this is just a, like a quick little reader if you just need to do you know something a little less one day good little information in there it's kind of like a diary of a few days walking in the wilderness this we have had for quite some time um a wetland survival story meadowlands and this you can see discarded as it's from a, a library bookstore. 
Lots of library bookstore stuff in my pile here. Sometimes they have these really nice five dollar. Well, apparently Alexa thought I was talking to her. Alexa, stop music. Okay, I'm not sure what I said, but she was definitely listening. Okay, so uh, just mentioning again as far as library bookstores go, definitely seek out ones in your area and find out when their hours are because sometimes they have really great sales. Um, sometimes they have like a, a $3 fill a bag sale or a $5 fill a bag sale. Um, and I usually bring, like I have this rolling bag that has, uh, it's like a teacher cart with a telescope handle on it and everything. It's got wheels. And that turns out to be a very good thing to do those library book sales with. All right, so we have bees, a honeyed history. These illustrations are absolutely hilarious. So we've got our uh, thief here with the beehive and bees falling all around him. So this book is just head to toe all about everything to do with bees. I love this anatomy of the honeybee page. This is perfect for doing art, you know, nature art and everything with your you're studying bees, different neat little honeycombs, little animated drawings. Now, a lot of these aren't very realistic looking, um, but not everything you draw has to be realistic anyway. I have a lot of fun pictures in this book, fun information, fruits and vegetables that need bees to grow. This is a really good book to have to really make a point of how important bees are to the world and for human survival for that matter. If we didn't have the bees, there'd be some pretty big problems. So this is really neat how they go all throughout history and, you know, mention types of bees, importance of bees, different bee illustrations. Napoleon and Josephine. I love these really big books with these neat illustrations or anything, but I hesitated on getting this for a while, but I'm actually really glad that I did get it because I, I was actually surprised with how much good information in here. And so that is Bees, A Honey History. Hopefully I can fit this over here. I have very limited space on my table here. Um, I'm going to actually skip this one for a minute and go to these other. You wouldn't want to live without bees. How true. So this is one of the Scholastic You Wouldn't Want To series. Um, there are so many of those books. I really would love to see more of those in the used bookstores, but they really are not ever in the bookstores around here. And um, I frequent those library bookstores pretty often and never ever do I see any of the You Wouldn't Want to Be series. So people must really hold on to those or maybe only sell them on eBay. I have picked up a few secondhand on eBay. Um, I think I just got this off of Amazon. But the You Wouldn't Want to Be series is really, really fun. They really lay the information out in a very interesting way that keeps you more captivated and they've got fun little cartoons and little tips and blurbs you know throughout the pages little neat things that the that bees are saying on this one how fun is that okay so that's you wouldn't want to live without bees from the you wouldn't want to series this is a really neat one turn this book into a beehive now i haven't had the heart to take apart the book and turn it into a beehive so Maybe at some point I'll buy an extra copy and use that one to turn into a beehive. But this is uh, night, uh, Turn the Spoken to a Beehive and 19 Other Experiments and Activities that Explore the Amazing World of Bees. So this is your resource for bee-related projects and activities. So we got 
honeycomb hexagons and they're just suggesting grabbing uh, paper towel cardboard tubes, two of them, and then you're going to be cutting strips and creating these hexagons um, and using paper clips and such. So really easy, fun little projects. This is a stem house. Plenty. A wood condo. Garlic, onion, and pepper spray. So I think this is probably something we're going to do really soon. You just have to get rid of cabbage worms, caterpillars, horn worms, aphids, fleas, beetles, and other insects. I wonder how this works though, as far as will it be a problem for butterflies because I do notice that aphids sometimes really do like to get on um, some of the butter butterfly attracting flowers out in my garden but I, I wonder if this would maybe either kill the little caterpillars that emerge from the butterflies eggs or keep the butterflies away so I don't know maybe that's probably not a good thing to put on your butterfly attracting plants like milkweed and lantana and such. We've got a milk spray and a soap spray. That's interesting. Oh, get rid of powdery mildew and other fun fungi with uh, milk spray. Two cups of milk and two cups of water. Interesting. So anyway, fun projects and uh, natural insecticides. And they have this, we're dissecting a flower that might be a good project for if you have a flower in your garden that's about to die. Um, you could snatch it off a plant and do that dissection with that. So this has turned this book into a beehive. Fascinating world of bees. This is another library bookstore find. It's a short little book, whoops. Oh, there's a whole series of these. I don't know that we have many more of these. I'd have to look throughout my bookshelves and I shall be doing that because I plan on doing some more of these book hauls or you know what do we have in the subject of books more or less. So we got beekeeping, producers of honey, bees and pollination, the dance of bees, problems in the hive, intruders in the hive, the hive a labyrinth of cells, lots and lots of different things about bees, good information, fascinating world of bees. All right, I'm going to actually go down through my pile and find a couple of other ones that I actually wanted to put out here on top. Okay, so I'm sure that everybody has seen those take-along guides. And I discovered that the take-along guides have compilation books and they're so cool. So here is Fun With Nature Take-Along Guide and it covers caterpillars, bugs, and butterflies, frogs, toads, and turtles, rabbits, squirrels, and chipmunks, snakes, salamanders, and lizards, tracks, scats, and signs, and trees, leaves, and bark. So you've got uh, six of your take-along guides in one book. And then they have more fun with nature take-along guide. So then in this one, we've got five different ones. We've got berries, nuts, and seeds, birds, nests, and eggs, rocks, fossils, and arrowheads, seashells, crabs, and sea stars, wildflowers, blooms, and blossoms. Now there are a few take-along guides that aren't included in these two, and I don't know if they made a, a third one of these because I, I have not yet to see it, so if you've seen it, please let me know. Uh, send me a link if you have one. Um, but there are several different titles that are not included in here, um, or either of the two books, but this, these are great compilations and it really saves you from having to track down, um, you know, 11 different take-along guides. 
this one. I love DK Smithsonian's. I love the DK books. I love the Smithsonian books, and I especially love the combination, the DK Smithsonian. They have some really great books out there. So this one is Trees, Leaves, Flowers, and Seeds, a visual encyclopedia of the plant kingdom. Plants of the World, Shrinking Forest, everything you'd ever know, want to know about squash, so lots of stuff about nuts, melons, volcanic vineyard, soft fruits, going underground, fruit or vegetable, types of grasses, bonsai, the forest floor, barking up the tree, what is a tree? All kinds of really, really great stuff in here. This is a fantastic resource guide. This goes with so many, you know, different aspects of nature. So this is Smithsonian, or DK Smithsonian Trees, Leaves, Flowers, and Seeds. Now, I have a neat little book that I tracked down at a local library bookstore a few years ago. We've had this for a little while now. The Kids Nature Book, 365 Indoor and Outdoor Activities and Experiences. So it goes throughout the whole year and gives you the dates, like here's June 3rd and, you know, we've got up here August all the way through. So every single day of the whole year, they have a suggestion for a different activity to do and you don't have to follow that suggestion you can just pick whatever you want because not everybody has the same seasons throughout the world so some things might not work out on February 11th for one person they might work out better for somebody in the other part of the world so this is a fun one the kids nature book and um this can be also found on eBay. I have seen it there. Uh, we picked it up at a library bookstore. Um, the Prairie That Nature Built. This is a really, really super cute book. I really like the illustrations on it, how they have the echinacea and different things in the front. Really, really vibrant animal drawings. This, you can tell it's used because it's a little bit, a little bit beat up. Not too bad though. Um, just a short little book and the drawings would be really 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 good for for art nature art so this one shows little habitats underground a really cool draw illust or, yeah, illustration of a uh, an owl with a big lubber grasshopper in its grasp we have a big problem with lubbers here every spring they try to eat everything in our yard they are fun to look at and very interesting, but they also like to destroy everything. So it's a love-hate relationship for sure. But look at that, that's just a beautiful drawing. That would even look pretty blown up on a wall. It's a really, really nice book. Very, very well done. It's the prairie that nature built. Okay, so I have the start of a trees section of this whole situation but I also have another bookshelf that has a whole bunch of tree books so I think I might just quickly kind of go through some of these and then I might save a in more in-depth look for a second video where I will pull these back out and put them along with the other tree books so uh, this is along that series of, you know, bees, a honeyed history. We've got trees, a rooted history. Same theme, you know, different information, of course, because it's all about trees, but they do the same thing as in the bees one. So this is another really, really great one to have for reference. Really cool illustrations. And, you know, this type of art is not totally intimidating, like some more super realistic. So this would be great for your apprehensive artists. You can also uh, do a lot of drawing and art tutorials with Art for Kids Hub. And you can search through their 
uh, YouTube channel and find, you know, different aspects of nature. I know they've done a lot of different things, but this is a really, really nice book. Look at that. Really, really fun book to have in the collection. I'll leave that sit right there because I think my stack's getting a little high. This is another fun one from the library bookstore. So we've got Our Planet for us. And this is just a short, little simple book with just little bits of information, not super in depth, but there are some pretty good uh, sections in here. And it's definitely good to go along with trees and forests, any type of unit study that you're doing on trees and forests. We've got Usborne Mysteries and Marbles of Plant Life. Usborne books are always really nice. I used to be an Usborne consultant, but with there being so many Usborne consultants and the fact that they sell their books on Amazon, it makes it a little hard to really, you know, get a business going with that. So we definitely love Usborne books, very much appreciate them in every possible way. Another good Usborne book. Uh, there was a school closing down about three years ago. Uh, I, I guess it's been you know what? It might have been in 2018. I think it might have been possibly in 2018. Anyway, I found out through a friend who has a local Little Free Library, and she sent me a message and said, you have got to contact the school. They're giving away all their books for free. And I said, what, what, what? Uh, so I uh, looked on the ad that was on Facebook Marketplace, and it said it wasn't starting until the following Monday, and it was a Friday. But I called them up and I said, you know, I'm like five minutes from you guys' school. You know, are you letting anybody look today? And um, they certainly were. And the lady kept encouraging me to take more and more books because she said, the more books I take, the less she'll have to get rid of. I ended up with an entire SUV full of books. And then, uh, you know, it really put a, a huge, addition to our our homeschool library and then uh, there were also you know science projects and nature items and all kinds of really cool stuff i ended up even ended up with sand from a beach in hawaii <laughs> so there was all kinds of neat stuff lots of different rocks big rocks you know all types of rocks um but there were all kinds of things like this so these are a few of the little things i just picked up from that, that school closing down. So just random little things. Um, I honestly haven't done a whole lot with these yet, um, but that's what those are from. And this is where a lot of the next few things are from as well. Actually, I think this might be from a library bookstore. Yep, it definitely is. Um, okay, so we've got Exploring Ecosystems Wetlands. Now, I think that this is, you know, a good book, but it is a dry read for sure. Um, and there are, there's a series that I prefer over this, which I still refer to this for information. Um, but I will go ahead and uh, show you that series in a minute. Um, but here's another, oh, you know what? This got away from the other bees. This is another bee book, Bees and Wasps. This is an Usborne. Um, and I think this came with the kit a few years ago when I signed up to be an Usborne consultant. And a nice little thing to have around. Uh, this would be a less intimidating approach to getting started with bees or um, getting started with unit studies. If you've not done unit studies and you want to kind of start off slow um, and do kind of like mini unit studies, this would be a great go-to book for that. 
Okay, so now we've got a couple of little books here. I, I think these actually did not come from that school. I think they might have been from a library bookstore. So we've got First Reports Mountains. Not a ton of information, good photos, a little bit of information. Uh, this would be good to assign to your kids or students um, to read because they're not terribly long, but they have some good information. It's a good uh, start to learn more about, you know, any, any given subject. I believe these are from a whole series, and I don't see why you couldn't be able to track these down in your local library bookstores or on eBay. A lot of these things are available. So they're first reports, Susan H. Gray. Also, Susan H. Gray. Sometimes things with, you know, book series, they sometimes are by other people, but Oh, okay, so look for these other books in the series, Rainforest, oh, see a different author, uh, Tundra, Wetlands, Oceans, Mountains, Desert, Coral Reef. So those are nice little biome books, um, good to assign to your children or students. Um, got Life in the Temperate Grasslands. Another really, really good one for assigning to your student or children um, so that you you know, have reading material to sign to them, but they're not gonna take multiple days or, you know, an entire week to read it. Um, they can kind of read through these a lot faster, or maybe you might wanna let them go ahead and mosey through it for an entire week, and this would be, you know, just a few minutes a day of reading to go along if you were reading about uh, grasslands. We've got another wetland book, Wetland Food Chains. Again, this is another great thing for that sort of thing. Just, it can also be used for a quick read aloud if you need to really do a, a faster read aloud and not take a lot of time. A lot of good information. And it has that library smell to it. This is the first one I've opened up that has that kind of old library smell. All right, we've got biodiversity of wetlands and this is kind of a thin little uh, hardback book another discarded library find oh this is pretty neat okay so case studies climate change agriculture invasive species this is a good little book i haven't really explored this one too much uh, but we definitely will be adding it in with a future unit study we're going to be doing soon. Um, another library find. And this is a dollar on it, but this is from one of those fill-a-bag sales where you can get a whole bunch of books for $3 or $5, depending on your library bookstore. One of them did uh, $3, the other one did $5. This is just a short little thing, really good to assign to your children or students for when you're working on ecosystems, or you could do it as a short read aloud. It's another little little books, random things that I got from that uh, school that was closing down, just stuff to have on hand. I just kind of grabbed a little bit of anything and everything because like I said, the director of the school uh, said, you know, I'm closing up in three days and the more books you take, the less I have to get rid of. So I took all kinds of stuff and I figured anything that we eventually didn't use could be passed on to other homeschoolers or to um, Little Free Library. And we have our own Little Free Library also at, at, our, at our house. Um, from seed to sunflower. So I'm going to put this back with the bees. But not completely about these but yeah life cycles this is a nice little book actually oh wow nice drawings that's really pretty yeah I love this for assigning as you know just read it all in one day it's really short uh, I'm sure you could probably find this on eBay oh and there's other titles in the series from tadpole to frog from egg to chicken from seed to sunflower, from caterpillars to butterfly, and it's a Franklin Watts book, Life Cycles, it says at the top. And 
this one is out of place. <laughs> it's a fungi or a fungus. Uh, we, we have a few uh, fungi or fungus books and you know what? I'm gonna save that for that. So I'm gonna take that out of this file. And I wanted to show those couple of books that I was talking about um, that I really, really like for biomes. So this is a two-parter here. Okay, so these are by Rebecca L. Johnson. And let me tell you, these are a little bit of a challenge to track down because most of them are listed as prices in the hundreds uh, or $50 to $300, I've seen them. But if you put a little like watch on eBay, like search it and then favorite it and tell it to send you, you know, a notification by email when they see that title come up um, or part of that series or something by that author. Um, you can find them, you know, sometimes where they're like a fair price, like $5 or under, you know, kind of thing. So that's what I did. It took me a little while to get these, but I've got all of them now. So we've got a walk in the desert. Um, and these are called the Biomes of North America series. Uh, these are the most well-written series for biomes that I have seen, and they cover the most biomes, and they have actual photos, live photos, rather than illustrations, which illustrations are great, but uh, for as far as if you really want an in-depth look at biomes, this is what you want to look for. Um, and if you can track these down, um, that would be awesome. You know, I, I'm sure you will enjoy them. Um, second, from the, that was a walk in the desert. We've got a walk in the prairie. And I'll just kind of jump through this real quick. And then we've got a walk in the tundra. A walk in the boreal forest. And these are really good. We've read several of these. We haven't gotten through the entire thing yet because um, like I said, it took me a while to track them down, but they're really good. A Walk in the Deciduous Forest. This is another one of the ones that we've already been through. Really, really good in-depth information, not dry reads at all. These are, these are really captivating, very good. A Walk in the Rainforest. really really beautiful or not illustrations but photographs life lifelike photographs or they are lifelike photographs they're real photographs um and this is the second section of the series uh for the biomes this is a journey into a lake oddly i picked all of these up for some reason in this paperback style and i could only get these ones in hardback and it, i don't know why but whatever um, well, apparently this was a gift from a Montessori school to a child. How neat is that? Wow. 2007, 2008. So, wow. Okay, so this, in the, it says Biomes of North America here in the corner as it did. And the other, so this is a journey into a lake. And sorry for the funny noise in the background. My dog sometimes makes little choking noises. This is kind of the thing he does. So, so we've got a journey into a lake. Now we've got a journey into a wetland. This one apparently was from, oh wow, New York. Nanuet Public Library in New York. Interesting. It's fun to see where used books come from. Again, with the really beautiful uh, photographs journey into a wetland and we've got a journey into the ocean a library thing on here this must not have been in a library we've got a journey into an estuary I have really looked and looked and looked out there for good books on biomes or one book that has really good information on all the different types of biomes never found it so if you've seen something that is a 
all together thing and has all of what I'm showing you in one book and a lot of great information and photographs, um, then please let me know about that. But I'm, these are great books. Uh, so that was A Journey Into an Estuary. Now we've got the last one, A Journey Into a River. Now there is one more book that I don't have and it's called A Journey Into the Deep. And I'm still looking for that one at a reasonable price and not for 50 or you know, 100 or 200 or $300. And literally it's crazy the prices you'd see on line. And that, uh, that goes for um, Amazon and on eBay. So just keep looking and keep looking. And eventually I found super good prices on all of these. I did not pay any outrageous price for any of those. And the last couple of things that I want to go ahead and uh, put into this um, into this little video. Um, we have the Welcome to the Museum series, and I'm not going to show them all to you right now, um, you know, because not all of them are relative to, you know, just general nature books, although everything is nature, but, um, so here is Botanicum. They have a new one coming out that comes out in, I believe, April of next year, and, um, that one is Oceanarium, so I'm looking forward to getting that one. So this is just all types of different aspects of nature, and I really like how they'll show you like what the inside of you know the tree looks like and such. Really, really, really neat and uh, illustrations that are very vintage looking. Um, they make great art for sure. good information for sure and um not you know long and drawn out just really good and to the point and then for every one of these drawings there'll be like a number and then on the opposite page it tells what that is so really really good book lots of different aspects of nature in here uh, as far as you know botanical wise for plants and such um and you know what i think that's actually the last one i'm going to show you for now because I think that the other ones, you know what? Nope, there's one more. I believe I do have a lot more flower books on a different shelf, so maybe I'll just do one on just flower type things at some point. But I just love, like I said, these Smithsonian, DK Smithsonian books. And this is in association with Q, um, K E W. I think I'm saying that right, K E W. Um, and that's the Royal Botanical, oh, I can't see that, Royal Botanical Gardens. And I believe that that is in England, maybe? I don't know. I'm going to have to look that up. I can't remember because I had some other information on those, those gardens as well, the Royal Botanical Gardens. I'm not super familiar with uh, botanical gardens in other countries. I think it was in... England but these are really really well done books this was a Christmas gift my kids received this and another couple of books they have both lifelike photo or actual photos you know and also illustrations as well See, look how pretty pretty that is. That's just so beautiful. The inside of a hollyhock. The orchid. A lot of inspiration in this book for um, art. You could probably even take neat little photos with um, your iPhone and maybe then uh, do the one of the companies that will print out photos and mail them to you. Could put little um, magnets on your fridge. I can't remember which one I use, but there's um, a few different ones that they'll do like magnets of your photos for a really good price too. They always, always have sales. Okay. Well, I think I'm going to conclude this at this point, 
And I know it was a very long video, lots of books, but I hope you enjoyed this and have a great day.